Welcome to ArcGIS Experience Builder. We are going to talk about new features added in the December update. In the December update, there are two new widgets, Elevation Profile and Suitability Modeler. Without further ado, let's see the demo from Alex. An Elevation Profile widget is now available in Experience Builder. You can use it to view the ground elevation information for a line that you draw on a web map or a web scene. Or you can also select existing lines from your data to view the ground elevation or to view their elevation relative to the ground. Let's review some examples. I would like to create an application to explore the different trails for the Great Walks in New Zealand. I've started building an application with a web scene which already contains data for New Zealand including the imagery, the elevation service, along with the tracks for the Great Walks. So let's add the Elevation Profile widget to the widget controller. The first thing I need to do is select the map widget that's on my page. This widget was designed to allow for quick setup, so I could stop right here and start using it right away. So let's turn on the live view. I can see two options here. I can draw a profile on the map to view the ground elevation for that line, or I can select an existing line on the map to view the elevation. So if I use a draw tool here and start drawing on the map to get the elevation information for that segment, the elevation is shown dynamically as I draw. But since I already have tracks in my web scene, let's choose the option to select lines instead. And let's take a look at the walk called the Kepler track and zoom to the start of it. Now that I've selected a segment, I can open the profile statistics pane. The data for this trail was created using multiple segments. For most elevation profile widgets, this would be a challenge as you would only be able to select one segment at a time to view its profile, but not with this widget. As you can see here, highlighted on the map in yellow, you are now prompted to select another segment connected to the first one you've selected. So let's say I want to explore the trail to the left. I can select that segment. You will see the graph and the statistics have updated to reflect that new segment. And so on, I can keep selecting connected segments for the length of the track I want to view on my profile, or until there's nothing else I can select. So now if I review the track in the graph, I will notice it is displaying the profile from end to start, rather than from the starting point and the end point I was expecting to see. I can quickly reverse the direction of the profile in the graph. I can now see, for example, that this portion of the Kepler track covers about 23 kilometers with an elevation gain of 680 meters. I can also quickly switch the units here to view this in feet and miles instead. Now let's go through another example and customize some of the widget settings. So here is an application for viewing two utility networks. The map widget contains two web maps, one for stormwater and one for sewer. I can quickly drag and drop the elevation profile widget to the canvas and configure it. Under Customize Settings, I can select the map to customize. Let's customize the widget for the stormwater map. First, let me select the line on the map and open the statistics window so you can better see how the configuration affects the graph. Under Profile Settings, the elevation layer is used as a surface that provides the base height for the layers in the map. Then you can choose the default units for the graph. So let's change these to feet for both elevation and distance. The ground color is the color used to represent the ground elevation, which is brown by default. And you can see it reflected in the graph right now. The map selection color is displayed on the map when you select lines. Right now, this is cyan. The profile statistics can be enabled or disabled 
and you can customize the display and order of the different statistics. Optionally, you can enable the advanced settings to configure options for the selectable line layers. All the layers that can be selected from the map will be listed here. If I remove a layer from this list, I will not be able to select it on the map to view its elevation profile. So now I will click a layer from the list to customize its settings. So here I can configure the elevation and the distance settings to define how the lines will draw on the elevation profile graph. So first, I'll choose the source for the elevation values for these pipelines. In this case, there are two fields in my data with elevation values, upstream elevation and downstream elevation. And these values were stored in feet. For the length of the lines, I will keep the default distance setting and have it be calculated based on the map projection and the feature geometry. Finally, I can select a style to represent the lines in the graph. Going back to the content pane of the widget configuration, let's take a look at the general settings. Here, I have the option to activate one of the tools when the widget loads. So for example, if I activate Select Line, and I preview the application, the app loads with the elevation profile open and the select tool active and ready to use for the user to start selecting lines. Under Appearance, I have the option to show or hide different elements of the graph, such as the grids, the access titles, and the legend. When I'm happy with my configuration, I can save and launch the app and start exploring the network. So check out this widget and give a new profile to your maps. That's great. Thanks, Alex. Next is Suitability Modeler. Take away, Eliza. We are excited to share the new Suitability Modeler widget in Experience Builder. This widget allows users to combine and weight different layers to evaluate multiple factors at once. Suitability models help answer questions like, where is there the greatest risk for fire or flood? Where is the optimal location for a commercial development? Where is the best area to practice habitat conservation? The answers to these type of questions depend on input data and the criteria defined around that data. Let's build out an example of a habitat suitability model that will help answer a question of where we should target conservation. In this very simple application, we have a map and the suitability modeler widget with weighted raster overlay modeling service published by Esri called the Ecophysiographic Diversity Model. From this model, we are able to select the layers that we want to include in our analysis. For habitat suitability, we'll take a look at the ecophysiographic diversity, population density, and slope. You can tailor your analysis depending on the different layers included in a published weighted raster overlay service. Users have the ability to publish their own services or use one of the published services by Esri. Now that we have selected these layers, we can move on to our design model. It's in this step that we assign the weights to our layers and the suitability scores within those layers. We also have the ability to control the color ramp. In this example, we want areas of high suitability to be represented in green. Currently, all of these weights are set at zero. We need these to add up to 100% before we can run our analysis. So we can go ahead and click Run to generate our suitability model. Let's dive deeper into what we're actually modeling. For ecophysiographic diversity, we can open up our scores and take a look at what's been applied. Currently, we are saying that areas with high ecophysiographic diversity have high suitability. This is consistent with what we would think for habitat suitability. Areas with diverse ecologies and landforms are more suitable for habitat conservation. Let's take a look at population. Currently, this score is showing that areas with high levels of population have the highest suitability. This is contrary to what we would want for habitat conservation. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this suitability ramp. So that way areas with higher levels of conservation are represented with low suitability and areas with low population have high suitability. 
A factor such as slope might be relevant if you are targeting a specific species that has a specific type of terrain that it likes to target. For this example, we'll keep it the same. So now we'll click Run again to update our suitability layer. We can now see that areas such as the Sierras in California are being represented as having higher suitability for habitat conservation. As we zoom in, the layer will redraw for a screen resolution. So what comes next from here? We might want to better understand the actual outcome of our suitability model. We could do this by exporting this layer, so that way it can be used in other applications and shared with other users. Or we might want to start to generate charts. Charts allow us to summarize the results based on polygons that we either draw or select from our map. To begin, I'll use the Draw Freehand Polygon to draw a polygon on the map and summarize my output. A chart is updated, which gives us the percent breakdown of suitability scores within that polygon. Another option for generating a chart is using a polygon that exists on our map. In this map, I have the USA States layer. I can select a state boundary from this map. Our chart now summarizes the suitability scores within the state of Nevada. The Suitability Modeler widget is a great way to introduce common GIS workflows like the Weighted Raster Overlay Analysis to everyday users. Let's take a quick look at the configuration it takes to set up this widget. Users must select a map where they want the output of their analysis to be displayed. They can control whether or not a label is displayed on the widget, as well as control that name. They also can turn on and off the option of allowing an export. Finally, you can select which weighted raster overlay model you want to be loaded into your widget. You can start by using a blank model, or you can choose from a pre-configured model which will load in layers, weights, and scores into your widget. Thank you for joining me for this quick overview of the new suitability modeler widget in Experience Builder. Thanks, Eliza. In addition to new widgets, we have made improvements in the builder and existing widgets. First, URL. To help navigate the page, view, and window in a meaningful way, the app's URL now displays their labels instead of original ID numbers. You may have shared apps links prior to this release and wonder if they will continue to work when you update and republish apps. The answer is yes, they will not be broken. We now have smartphone editing experiences. Let's update a feature for instance. Notice that our operation field is available when the shelter status is open. Change the status to closed, the hours operation field is no longer available. In this case, the visibility of one field depends on the value of another field, could be configured in the form using Map Viewer or Field Apps. The Edit widget picks the form up by honoring the web map settings. We can make search on the other page while make map automatically zoom or pan to resultant features. To do so, apply a new message called data filtering change. To improve image loading experiences, we optimize the loading performance with a display quality. You can choose original, high, medium, or low. Besides long and the bar, pie chart is available now in two styles. In Query, you can add descriptions. When you click the information icon, you can get instructions tailored to you. Starting this release, we can also set custom icon for a folder or links so that they can display on the menu. Lastly, default templates are divided into six categories, so we can easily find the right template to start with. 
Here is the summary of enhancements. I want to point out that, like story maps, a fuzzy image is now used during the initial loading. That's all. Thank you. Thank you.